Well, here we are. <laughs> it is definitely a swamp. <laughs> and it wouldn't be bad if it wasn't so cold. I think it's still in the 30s. Um, it was 39 when I got out of my shovel driver's car. And my shovel driver, by the way, is named Marie Butler. And she is the trail coordinator for, I think, the first 200 miles of the trail, starting at Buck's uh, Hall, which is the southern terminus. She's amazing. Such an incredible woman and a wealth of knowledge about the trail. Such a good resource. And she helps shuttle hikers, so keep that in mind. Um, she only charges for gas. I paid her more than that because she took time out of the day to shuttle me basically 50 something miles. And you know, I don't know where she lives, but that's more round trip for her. So big endeavor, a trail angel for sure. So thank you, Marie, if you watch this. But yeah, it's, uh, it's slow going because of the rain. Well, not because of the rain, because of the trail conditions, definitely swampy. Um, up to my, almost to my knees and some passages or some parts. Um, right now I'm on a short little snip at a road walk and it's so easy. <laughs> Makes me want to look at all these Forest Service roads and detour around some other spots. I just passed a trail sign with some safety tips for paddlers, like canoes and stuff. And I believe that this is a put-in for a canoe trail. It'd be pretty gnarly, I would feel like, to navigate around, but it's beautiful through here. Makes it worth all the foot-numbing cold <laughs> I've been walking through just to see this. It's just beautiful, very peaceful. All good things must come to an end, I suppose, because I'm about to walk through it now. <laughs> I had no idea I'd be walking through this. I was hoping the boardwalk would continue on the whole way because it's just been glorious. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna put my phone up and embrace the suck. So I'm still walking through the swamp. <laughs> and this is just wild. I mean, I'm not complaining at all. It's such a fun experience to do. It's just crazy. Um, I'm half looking for alligators <laughs> because I feel like this is where they live if they were going to live around here. Well, I'm on the other side of the swamp and man, that wasn't safe. <laughs> That turned into a fun adventure, or went from a fun adventure to unsafe with one footstep. And I was in up to my waist. And it wasn't a strong current, not strong enough to carry me off, but I couldn't get my footing. And uh, yeah, it wasn't good. So I couldn't see anything. Like I couldn't tell where I was on the trail. I had to keep looking at my GPS, which was helpful, but there's only so much you can do in a situation like that, except backtrack, which is almost what I did. I called Marie, my trail shuttle, who she said that after heavy rains like this, sometimes they let out the dam at Lake Moultrie and that area is flooded like that. So she's gonna post it on the website and social media and all that to warn other people to stay out of that section because this is no good right now. When I called her, honestly, to backtrack, felt more dangerous than to keep going once she kind of gave me some pointers of what to look for. Apparently there's boardwalks throughout that whole mess, but you just have to know where they are. So I finally saw just a little part of one under the water. The water's so uh, murky you can't see through it, so it's not like you can see down to them. And if you step off of them, which is what I had done, it's deep. <laughs> a lot deeper. So... I'm cold now. I'm not scary cold, but just uncomfortable. Um, I love a good adventure, but I don't like a dangerous one. <laughs> not by myself especially, so I'm glad I'm on the other side. I'm actually road walking, because she said it could be bad in a couple more spots. 
because of that, the dam being let down a little bit. So there's no reason to chance it. Live and learn, right? This is the school of hard knocks. Uh, trial and error out here. But um, yeah, I'm just, I didn't like that. So I'm still road walking uh, after Marie told me that I may encounter two more areas of that kind of stuff. I decided it was not worth the risk. And even though the road walking is going to add some mileage as fast as I'm moving on the road, I think I'll actually be faster than slogging through all that, especially if it's not safe. I would have turned back. Back on the trail and it's still wet, but at least it's not dangerous until I fall on one of these uh, railroad ties. I will say that these are nice when they have them, but they're few and far between, and you have to be careful because they're pretty slick But in spots. But they're also, the more concerning thing is rebar sticking up in spots, and not just like a little bit, but there's some pretty big chunks sticking up. So just be mindful if you do this trail. back off trail now I'm on the road again I had to call an audible it's just too slow going there's uh not the kind of water that I went through earlier nothing like that but it's still just relentless you're just slogging through stuff constantly and it's so murky that you can't see your feet and so I kept stepping in holes and like you know not twisting my ankle but the potential's there and that's not what I want to do so and I was just getting too cold. Um, I didn't underestimate this trail by any stretch. I knew it'd be tough, but uh, I didn't expect it to be quite as often, I guess, all the water. I knew there'd be a lot, but it's pretty much the entire trail. There's just no dry stretches at all. And you just can't move fast through that. And I gotta get back to my car by tomorrow. <laughs> I can't be out here any longer than that. So within seconds, I was second guessing my decision to take this little loop of trail instead of the road. It's a mess, <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> All you can do is laugh. It's safe. There's nothing dangerous other than my feet are cold, but they're, the temperatures have warmed up. But uh, <laughs> I needed an adventure like this. And whoa! <laughs> those are those potholes I was talking about. <laughs> You can't see them, so it's not like if I were looking down, it would have been any safer. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I needed an adventure like this right now. <laughs> I've uh, just kind of had the winter blues and, um, man, going through the change that women go through in their late 40s, early 50s. I turned 49 on Sunday, so I wanted to do something that made me feel young. This is definitely doing it. <laughs> Man, what an absolute hellhole. It's actually called Hellhole Reservoir, so I can call it that and not feel too guilty. It's actually quite nice, very pretty. But gotta keep moving. So here we have the Witherby campsite. Somehow I missed one of them that I passed earlier. I can't remember the name of it now, but this one is quite nice. Even wood in the fireplace and everything, or fire pit. This is the funniest trail. It kind of feels like I'm in a, like the twilight zone, like it's never going to stop just being straight. <laughs> Which I'm not complaining. It's dry. It's so good. I got about eight more miles to camp, I think. So getting there. I'm not really excited about walking through this.
So I'm at the road crossing where I left my water. Hopefully it's still here. Let's see. There they are. So got my water. Got four more miles left. And I think it's going to get pretty wet. So I'm going to look at my map and see if I can find some workarounds with um, some road walks near it. I think I probably can a little bit anyway, just because it's going to be dark. And I think it's going to be one of those areas. I remember Marie saying your turkey creek, it could get a little weird. So we'll see. But it's beautiful trail through here. Not quite as swampy. Um, all these, I think they're beech trees with their leaves on them. They're just beautiful. And the sun is coming out. Look at that. Yay! We may even have some stars tonight. Of course, it'll still be a muddy, swampy mess tomorrow, but man, to have a little sun with it, I'm not going to be upset about that. So, I am going to start eating my Cheetos because Cheetos make everything better. But really, life's good. No complaints. Ooh, what a day. I am in camp. I'm not at Turkey Creek campsite because Marie texted me and said that I should probably stay at a church that is, uh, I think about a mile from Turkey Creek, but I was already about a half mile away from that campsite. So I had to backtrack. I said half a mile or so to get here. She was worried about the flooding in that area being a problem still. So, um, yeah, so here I am, and I had a good dinner. Realized I forgot my spoons. I had to fashion some chopsticks out of sticks and eat chili with chopsticks, uh, but it all worked out fine. My feet were miraculously great. I, I just couldn't believe how good they looked. They were hardly macerated at all. Um, they held up fine, so maybe there's something to that zinc oxide. I don't know, because back home, I feel like they would have been a mess by the end of a 30-mile day, which is what it ended up being. Uh, slogging through that much water constantly. This was definitely the wettest hike I've ever been on as far as my feet goes. Just constant wet. So um, I'm going to get some shut-eye, try to get up early so I can get out of this church's yard before anybody gets here if they have anything going on, and uh, plow through the last 25 miles. So I'll see you in the morning. Night-night. Good morning. Back at it. I slept pretty good last night. Um, heard some barred owls. That was fun. But it's a beautiful morning. A few clouds, but I think they're going to burn off. It's a little chilly, but uh, it's not raining. <laughs> and I started the day with a little road walk and crossed over Turkey Creek on just an overpass. And man, it was, I don't know what it looks like in normal times, but it was pretty full of water, and I even heard this big splash as I was walking by. So, of course, I thought it was an alligator. It made me all the more grateful that I'm doing a little work around, or I did a little work around on four service roads to get by it on the recommendation of Marie. Um, I'm so grateful for her help through all of this. She that was the one who texted me about staying at that church last night, and I would have been really cranky if I'd gotten to Turkey Creek and been too nervous to go through it or if it had been impassable so looking forward to finishing this thing out maybe i'll keep a better pace today i'd like to get to the buck hall and have a little bit of time to just relax and enjoy the scenery there on my birthday eve can you see what's behind me that my friends is blue sky and sun on my face I'm loving it. Wow, you realize, I just saw a deer pass by. You realize how much you miss the sun when you don't see it for days on end. Oh, wow, oh my goodness, oh. I just saw five deer go by and one of them at the end was a little fawn, so cute. They just leapt across the trail. Oh man, I wish I could have videoed it, but oh well, it was really special. Anyway, it's beautiful out here and gorgeous day. Um, I crossed a road a few minutes ago 
a paved road and as I was crossing, I saw two big groups of road cyclists go by. But it reminded me of a YouTube channel that's really entertaining called Simply Mountain Biking. It's three, I'm assuming they're three friends. I don't know if they're relatives or what, but anyway, they have mountain bike the Swamp Fox Passage as well as the Ondaw and I guess I'm assuming you say it, Moultrie, the Lake Moultrie Passage, but they have a great time. They're fun. They could give you a perspective of what it's like to mountain bike it. Just thought I'd mention them. They're fun. Carlson Dam Campground. Tons of wood stacked up all over the place. I don't know what all that's about. If you wanted a fire, you got wood for days. This is huge. I don't see like a fire pit. I guess there's one over there. But if you had a group, this would be your place. Huge amount of space. So this is a really interesting section through here. It's real dry. And I think the reason is water on both sides. But I'm walking up on this raised, I guess like a dike of sorts. And from what I understand, that's what the section should be like that I went through yesterday where I got up to my waist and it was so sketchy. And so it makes sense why, and that's what Marie thought happened was that I just stepped off of it and down into, you know, the the uh, part that wasn't raised because I couldn't see, you couldn't see my feet. And <laughs> yeah, I look at this and I think, wow, yeah, I can see how that would get deep real fast because this is so raised up, but it's gloriously dry. So that section's probably lovely when there's not a dam that's been released. <laughs> about eight and a half miles out, almost finished with the Swamp Fox Passage. I know the Awandal will not be any less muddy and puddly, but it just means I'm that much closer. So um, I've encountered several people today out enjoying this day, so that's been nice. And there's a, I guess a gun range somewhere nearby. I hear a lot of gunshots and uh, highway traffic too. So definitely getting back closer to civilization. <laughs> I'll miss the quiet of the forest, I already do. Good morning. I am at Buck Hall Recreation Area, which is the southern terminus of the Palmetto Trail. I finished yesterday afternoon and spent the night here last night. I woke up to my 49th birthday. Yee. That sounds really old. At least I feel young at heart, right? Uh, especially after this past experience the last two days. But I wanted to do just a short recap based on my experience and hopefully give a little guidance for anyone else who might be considering hiking these two passages. It was a great experience. All in all, I had a fabulous time. I would absolutely come out here and hike it again. The puddles and the all the swampy stuff didn't bother me a bit honestly that I'm used to hiking and that kind of stuff in the Smokies as far as water my feet stay wet 
a lot there. So that part didn't bother me a lot. What did bother me though was the flood conditions. And that's one of the main points I want to drive home. If you do come down here to hike this, do not underestimate the power of areas within the Swamp Fox Passage that can get potentially dangerous. I had reached out to the Palmetto Trail Association before I came just to make sure that I wouldn't encounter that degree of flooding because i very risk averse. I knew that that would be dangerous and didn't want to do that. But they assured me that it would just be nuisance stuff, just puddles and, you know, muck and mud and things that I knew I could handle fine. Uh, but obviously that wasn't the case. And they, no fault of theirs, I, I don't fault them and I'm not trying to throw them under the bus by saying this. They went with the information that they had at the time, but it did turn sketchy and it did turn dangerous. So I'm going to leave a link to a website below that just will give more data points on Lake Moultrie with spillage and water levels of the creeks um, upstream of the lake and all that that could factor into it becoming a dangerous situation. But I'd always also encourage you to probably reach out maybe to the Forest Service too. Uh, the Francis Marion Forest Service Division and just get their spin on it too, just to get more perspectives if it's potentially going to be dicey like that because it's not worth your life. And I should have turned back. I'm the first to admit it was stupid to go in there and I should have listened to my gut, but I just kept hearing uh, the Palmetto Trail Association's voice in my head saying, no, oh, it'll be fine, you know, just up to your knees. And I thought, man, it looks deeper, but we'll see. And I quickly found out it was much deeper. And that brings me to my next point. If you're in a situation where you're uh, scared and getting a little nervous and know that you've not made a good choice like I had, definitely try to stop and think logically. At one point, I slipped up to my waist twice, and the second time it happened, I felt a little piece of driftwood or something graze my leg, and I full-on panicked. I thought it was a dang alligator. So. <laughs> talk about somebody scrambling fast back up to shallow water. That's what I did. But at that point, I was really freaking out. And I had to just honestly yell at myself, Nancy, calm the F down, except I said the word. And I had to say it a couple of times. But once I could kind of talk to myself in third person like that, it helped me just take a breath and stop. And there's an acronym that I like to teach people. I'm on a search and rescue team in Western North Carolina. So I'm constantly trying to preach hiker safety and preparedness, the irony, right? But uh, I did think of that acronym that I teach so many people, and it stands for Stop, Think, Observe, and Plan. And that's what I did. I did stop, just thought about, all right, what have I gotten myself into? How am I going to get myself out in the best possible way? and just observe my surroundings. I called Marie, who gave me some pointers of what to look for to pick out the trail going forward. Even though she wanted me to backtrack, I really thought, you know, at this point, I can see the dry land on the other side. I can now see where she's telling me the trail should be. And I was able to more safely go forward versus backwards. And so I planned out that versus going back and letting her pick me up and, and drive me around these bad spots. Uh, but just never underestimate the power of stopping yourself to think logically versus emotionally. You're almost always going to make poor choices when you're acting on emotion that's related to fear like that. Um, so that's the, the other tip. Third tip is don't underestimate the power of or the, the terrain. Even if terrain is flat, if you're used to coming from flat or a mountainous terrain like I am in the Smokies, this took its toll on my feet. I didn't do a lot of footage the last seven miles yesterday because my Achilles tendons were screaming at me. They were really tight and they still are. And I can only attribute that to just hiking on very flat land versus up and down with constant elevation gain and loss. And I probably, in hindsight, should have dialed back my mileage a little bit just based on that. I'm a pretty strong hiker, I think, by most people's standards. And I'm used to hiking the mileage that I did these last two days. That's not a problem for me at all in the Smokies. And I do higher mileage than that often. But this was different. And I definitely am paying the price for that now. Hopefully, it's just nuisance stuff and not injuries from repetitive use type stuff. But um, just... Don't underestimate difference in terrain that you perceive is going to be easier, which might in fact be easier, but your body is going to revolt a little bit because it's not what it's used to. Um, so anyway, I hope all that's helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video and feel free to leave comments, questions. I'm happy to help anybody who wants to hike this passage or these two passages help 
plan out your trip if, if I can be of use. Definitely want to finish the whole Palmetto Trail because I had a good experience overall. So I'll make some more videos about it along the way, I think. So if you'd like to subscribe and get notified, feel free to do that. And hopefully I'll see you again in the future. Y'all have a good one and happy trails.